Hello there, my name is Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky, and I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence AI. And the reason I want to talk about it is because I've just got an update to the application Craft, which is a really good application. I really like it on the Mac. It's a brilliant application, in fact. And I was thinking about getting rid of it because, well, it's just one extra subscription I have to pay. And I've been using um, Obsidian for a long time now and really liking it. And it kind of covers most of what I do with putting in text. Uh, having a personal knowledge management system and stuff like that. But this thing with craft and its artificial intelligence, mm, it's kind of compelling. It's kind of good. I could use the artificial intelligence in a few ways that could make my work making YouTube videos a little bit easier. For instance, if I need to put in a little bit of a blurb, I can get this artificial intelligence to write it for me. I mean, it's not text that I expect a lot of people to read. It's not text I'm putting out as if it's like my own. It's just there to help the the algorithm with YouTube. So it's going to be an algorithm which is making use of another algorithm, the AI algorithm, to basically sort of do a job. And it's not sort of there as a creative endeavor. So I opened up Craft to have a look and see what we could do with it. And I started off by putting in the title, Will Artificial Intelligent Text Be Considered Plagiarism? Put that text in there and then I asked the Artificial Intelligence uh, algorithm to give me some text. And it gave me 275 words. And it was quite good. In fact, it was brilliant. Basically, it says that when it comes to plagiarism, many of us think that plagiarism is going to be a student who copies somebody else's work and puts it out as their own. But in artificial intelligence, text, actually even pictures as well, are being generated and there's no creativity, there's no creativity in it. And if you are putting it up as your own and your work, then maybe that's not right. It's, um, it's not creative and it's, it's, it's not a good thing to do. But if you're using it to do a job, if you're using it for commercial purposes, is it going to be a violation of copyright? I mean, how original is this text that's been generated? Is someone else going to be using the same AI somewhere else and generating the exact same text? And you can have a whole lot of text all over the internet just being spewed out by this one algorithm and it's all the same. And then it just dilutes it all and it's worthless. I mean, one way that you could use it perhaps would be to um, get it to um, generate the text and then just use it as a basis of some ideas, add some more stuff to yourself and then just completely rewrite it in your own words. That's one way of doing it. Or maybe if you wanted to, what you could do perhaps is a um, possibility that you can write whatever it is that you want to write and then ask the artificial intelligence to rewrite it for you and then you go over it and decide which bits are the best choosing the bits that you want, you know, actually sort of putting some choices and creative thought into it, and then it makes it your own. So that's a possibility. Maybe you need it just for creating some keywords. So if you want some keywords to put into your YouTube um, page there where you need keywords to put in there. I mean, I don't know how much YouTube uses the keywords now, but you've got to put some keywords in anyway. So that could be a good way to do it. Or maybe you're looking for some hashtags that you get it to generate a hashtag to put into Instagram. So it's all a bit sort of up in the air on how to use this the best. But let's have a look and see how this actually works in Craft Assistant Artificial Intelligence. So here we are in Craft and I've got a title I've put into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the forward slash and then go to Assistant, say, write an article about this topic. It takes a little while thinking about it and then it starts pewing the text out. Now this is different from what came up with the previous topic that I put in there. So it's good and it's interesting. And let's have a look and see what we've got at the end of this. OK, so it stopped doing its stuff there and we can say insert in documents. And it's not bad, really. As technology continues to become more and more sophisticated, artificial intelligence, AI, is gaining traction as a tool to help people increase efficiency and productivity. Well, that's kind of true. But AI isn't only for improving processes. It can also be used creatively to produce art and new forms of expression. If you're looking to experiment with AI, here are a few tips to get started. But I don't particularly agree with that sentence because I don't think it's creative. It's not really giving you new forms of expression, not unless you actually do something with it. It's a tool. When photography came along, people said, oh, painting is dead because, you know, I mean, we've got photography now and people don't need to do that. But art changed and, you know, Art, it's, uh, photography itself became an art form because of the things that you could do with photo photographs to, to change in all sorts of ways. And Photoshop blurred all the lines as well, pardon the pun. But you know what I mean, unless you sort of 
actually do something with a tool and make some decisions, creative decisions, then it's not creative. It's as simple as that. I don't think I'm against using artificial intelligence. It's just that if you're going to use it, use it creatively. So I, I might take this text here and say, OK, well, there's my ideas. I've got it up on the screen there. Now what I'll do is I'll go into drafts, my application I use for inputting text, and I'll maybe look at the first paragraph there, have a think about it, and then write my own stuff there. And then what I could do is if I wanted to, what I could do is if I think, well, maybe the... Um, the text that I've just written using dictation in draft is not bad, but maybe it could be a little bit better. What I can do is I can tell it to rewrite it. So let's get some text out of uh, draft, which I've written using dictation, and we'll see if we can get that to be written in rewritten in craft. And then we're going to give this a title, and this is Affinity Designer. I've been writing about. Have a look at my videos about Affinity Designer. There's quite a few of them. Affinity Designer version two is really good. OK, so let's uh, put in the forward slash and go to assistant. And then I can do a few things with this here. I could say summarize or so create an outline. I could write pros and cons, uh, generate keywords, or I can put something in myself. OK, so let's ask Craft to rewrite with a positive opinion. And let's see what happens. If you notice down here, I've got 97 requests remaining. I think that's a daily thing. I'm not sure about that, but I think it's a daily thing. Click on that there and see what happens. Let's insert in document. It hasn't sort of rewritten a lot for me. All it's given me is this. I'm a bit disappointed, really. So what it's come up with is I'm excited to take advantage of the new version 2 of Affinity Designer. Well, there's not really something I would say I'm excited to take advantage of, but maybe, maybe something that could be used there. The symbol toolers have been immensely helpful with creating it. It's, it's all positive. It's very good. One of the new features I'm particularly excited about is the Shape Builder tool. OK, so what it's done is taken stuff from the whole of this here and there's just obviously too much there for it to deal with. And it's given me a much shorter version of this in this bit here. So maybe if I wanted to have that there as just a short piece to basically say a little bit about what I've written, it's something I could use that somewhere, I suppose. I have the main bit of text that I've written as a blog post and then put this here as something I put into something else where I link to the main blog post. Could work. I'm undecided about it. What do you think? Let's see what else can we do with this here. Let's put the forward slash in there. We'll go to the assistant again and we'll go to summarize. It takes a little bit of a while doing this sometimes. It doesn't do it um, really quickly. Okay, so it's given me a few words there. Let's insert that into the document. So it's given me some different text there and it's a summary of what I put into it. I suppose it's quite good. Not badly written. It's it's good text. I mean, like, it reads properly. It doesn't read like a computer wrote it, so that's something. Let's go back into it again. We'll do a forward slash and go to assistant. And we could have it explain this to me. We could write pros and cons. Let's do generate keywords. It seems to take longer each time I ask it to do something. Now it's coming up with the job there. So we've got a few keywords in there, inserting document. So Affinity Designer version 2, Symbol Tool, Shape Builder Tool, Warp Tool, all the different tools uh, I've added, I've put in there. It's put Warp Tool in twice, so it's not that clever. It's not too bad. I suppose if you go into this again and sort of basically do a bit of um, editing on there to sort of select the bits that you want, it could be good. Let's go back into again, forward slash, assistant, generate hashtags. OK, let's try that one. We don't get so many hashtags in there. Let's insert in document. Handy. Save you a good bit of time. You don't have to type all that art in. And all the stuff in there is stuff that they perhaps want to use there. I don't know. I think it's useful. It's got possibilities. Uh, forward slash again, assistant. And we could create an outline. We could uh, suggest a title, continue writing. As a possibility, translate to Spanish. Now, I speak Spanish when I'm at work all day long. And uh, my Spanish is not bad. I can have a conversation. I can have a chat. I can know what I'm doing with Spanish. But it's not really good when it comes to writing stuff. So this could be possible. I could use this to put a Spanish bit of text in there into the um, YouTube details. So maybe um, someone who's... A Spanish speaker could have a look at it and understand what I'm talking about in my description in YouTube. That's a possibility. Let's insert this into the document. Click on that. And it's good. It's all right. Anyway, this is Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky. I'm having a look at what you can do with artificial intelligence in craft. I think it's good. I think he's got possibilities. 
I think we're going to have to be careful how we use it. And I don't see it as being creative in of itself, but if it gives you some ideas on how you can be more creative and make some decisions that are creative with it, then OK, we'll go with it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye now. I'll tell you something. This artificial intelligence is not going to do the editing for me.